It's a really exciting time of the year. Uh, you love an event, you do, don't you? Oh, Jake? I love an event. Yeah, yeah it's, it's my favourite time of the year, I think. <laughs> up, there, up there with Christmas. <laughs> yes, exhibition season. <laughs> Bring it on. Welcome to the Cutting Room Podcast, brought to you by Seven Videos and me, Paul Sherwood. Each week, we'll be cutting through the things that you want to know about video marketing. Seven videos have been going for nearly 10 years now, and over that time, we've had many achievements, but also learned a lot of things along the way. This podcast is an opportunity for us to share all that knowledge and all that experience with you. Each episode is going to focus on a different topic, concluding with our seven top tips that you can start to put into action in your business. As with all podcasts out there, you know the drill. If you think it's any good, don't forget to give us a follow and keep up to date on when the next episode drops. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cutting Room. I'm Paul Sherwood, one of the founders of Seven Videos, and this week I'm delighted to be joined by Joe Sherwood, who's another one of our founders. Hello, Paul. Hello, Tutters. <laughs> Hello, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a new little nickname we've got for our viewers, allegedly. Uh, nice to see you, Joe. And I'm also delighted to be joined by Jake, who is one of our producers. Afternoon, Paul. Afternoon, Jake. Good to have you both involved today. This week, we're going to be talking all about how to use videos to stand out at exhibitions. So we're going to get into some of our seven top tips in how to deliver that. But before we get into all that good stuff, what's been going on, chaps? Uh, a lot. It's a um, busy couple of weeks, actually. We've been... It's event season is seems to be back in full swing, yeah. which has been nice. Um, since the last episode, I haven't cut my hair, which maybe you can tell how busy we've been. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of these. As you watch, the, just, as the episodes develop, it's just how much we change, either for the better or for the worse, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a dig, either. Right, yeah. I need to sync up my cycle of haircuts to uh, when we film episodes, because it's way off at the moment. <laughs> yeah. well, you do yours every two weeks. So. Well, yeah, and we film every two weeks. Yeah. So there's we an go. opportunity. And yeah, you mentioned event season, but so yeah, kind of full throttle, which hence the why we're sort of going to be talking about events in in this episode and probably next week's as well. Um, one event we went to recently, which we were very proud to go to, was the Selby District Business Awards, where Seven Videos picked up the Creative and Digital uh, Business of the Year, which was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, amazing. Two years in a row again, which is yeah. amazing. First time do it in person really good event and yeah just i think it's just great recognition for like the team and everything we've done over the last year um yeah also it's pretty nice being recognized and nice to win and i think yeah. the beauty of those awards as well is that maybe there's some different awards out there where you know there's a bit of politics at play or they have to you have to pay or sponsor certain things and you pay hundreds of pounds for an actual ticket you know this was a free event it was all done on its own merit and on our application and on i guess all the work we've done so yeah no, it's great to uh you know sort of get the nod of the head that you're doing some right things at, at least yeah no, i think sorry i was gonna say i think like you say sometimes these kind of awards can get a bad rap depending on how you do it yeah yeah, we won ours on merit. So, yeah, we're all happy with that. And also, we've been at Channel Live in the last sort of couple of weeks as well. Um, another exhibition down at the NEC in the in the telco sector. So we took quite a few of the team there. And, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to be sort of touching on in this episode around about how you can sort of use videos within, um, you know, to help yourself stand out at exhibitions. So it's quite good that we've sort of been there recently. And, well, we've done loads of events in different formats over the years, really, haven't we? Absolutely, yeah. It's a really exciting time of the year. Um, I think when you love an event, you do, don't you? Oh, Jake? I love an event. It's no, <laughs> it's no secret. Um, I mean, it, you know, it's great to get out of, with the team and sort of also the the events themselves. They always have a really good buzz about them. You know, everyone who is there uh, is excited about the subject matter that that has been spoken about. So yeah, it's, it's my favourite time of the year. I think. <laughs> just, oh, they were, oh, they were Christmas. <laughs> yes, exhibition <laughs> season. Bring it on. Right, so we'll get into it. So I guess when you come, you know, when you're looking at the wider marketing plan and looking at what sort of activities you're going to be doing as a business, you know, events are in there and up there in terms of priorities. You know, exhibitions usually geared towards sort of sector based. 
So if you're looking to get into a particular sector, like us with sort of telecoms and why Channel I was a really good event for us to be at, you know, there's a lot of other businesses out there looking at where their target audience are going to be and what exhibitions are going to be going to. So I guess the first point we're kind of wanting to cover off really is all about having that clear plan when you when you're looking at so you've you've say you've you found your you've found the exhibition that you want to do, you know what you're going to you, you know which one it's going to be. What do we need to be doing next in terms of planning what you're going to be doing there? I think with any sort of exhibition that you attend or um take part in it's it can be a fair bit of an investment so it's a short period of time an opportunity to actually create any sort of impact so without a strong plan in place you're in danger of not really maximizing your time there so i think one of the first things you need to look at is you know what are you looking to achieve at this event what will you look back at the event and think yes we achieved that we we did what we set out to do with it um and i think it en encompasses all kind of aspects of it and, and i think video is one of the main things you can do to uh, make sure that you stand out and and you're going to get the maximum engagement from the people that are there yeah and i think events are a, a really brilliant way of getting your target audience all in the same room face to face face obviously a lot of face to fake face face to fake face yeah so face to face <laughs> but do you know what i mean like you, you can focus a lot more on kind of online promos and stuff like that but actually having those people in the room and being able to talk to them is is a brilliant opportunity um and it's always tricky with events just you kind of you need to give it the time to work out what's been what success was. So, like you say, you've got to work out what it what you want to achieve, but you've also got to give it the time for it to bear fruition because it is about kind of building relationships and things like that. But like you say, video can be an integral part of that. There's so much you can use it for, whether that's pre coms, post coms. It can be a really invaluable tool to kind of get that message across. Um, and I think that's something you want to be really conscious of. What is that kind of one what is that one thing you want people to take away from the event, from when they've spoken to you, the content they see on the stand, your screens? Like, what is that one bit that you want people to take home with you? Um, yeah, and I think that there's a good point you mentioned about understanding who's in the room as well, because you know, the, you, before you go into these events, you, you want to be seen who you know if you can get access to who's attending you want to see that list if you can you want to understand what exhibitors are there what speakers are going to be speaking there what you know are any of our, our clients going to be there can i set up a meeting or is there any clients you want to be working with you need to spend a lot of time planning what you're wanting to do there because you know we've done it we're in in exhibitions in times gone by where you just you rock up with your roller banner and you just plonk it up i mean I, we, we went to one um, the Bol Bolton's football ground and it was all the, the grey uh, shell schemes and we, everyone had these really fancy stands and we were like oh shit we don't have anything like that so we had we stapled like five like A5 leaflets just to it and it looked so terrible and there was a video company about four down that had this all oh, this really cool equipment and we just had these like three leaflets <laughs> stapled to a wall um, needless to say we didn't really get many leads that day but it just kind of goes to show how you need to plan basically yeah that, that, that's how you get the most out of it which obviously sounds really obvious <laughs> but still people can kind of fall into that trap that you just turn up and and that'll kind of do the job but um and also it's understanding how you can engage people while you're there as well i think it's having a purpose like there's a lot of noise that goes on in these events there's a lot of noise everywhere whether it's online in person you know you need to I mean, we were at Channel Live recently and it was a bit of a shock to the system because it had been so long since we'd been in a similar kind of event where you do only have that 30 seconds to grab someone's attention and to, uh, and the, the world hasn't really been like that recently. It's been very much like nurturing and uh, and building a community and all that side of things. This was very much like a, mm. it's kind of a quick, cold sell almost quite quickly which is quite unnatural to a lot of people so it's it's understanding what you can do to engage people while you're there as well yeah and i think it's a difficult thing to 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 be able to build that connection straight away from that 
And I think you mentioned it about kind of what you do pre-event, working out who's going to be there and try setting up meetings when you're there. Just um, like you say, you've only got a small window of opportunity when people come to the stand, but there's so many other opportunities in that room which you can start looking at before you even get there. I think if you're just relying on people coming up to the stand, then you are kind of leaving a lot off the table, so to speak. And if you can kind of maybe build up relationships with people before the event, like you mentioned, whether you go on LinkedIn, get the exhibitor list, don't get the exhibitor list and just send out mass emails because that's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? If you can connect to the right people and start chatting to them beforehand, you've, you've, you're kind of nurturing them before you get there and you're not going into just that cold cell. Yeah, well, that's a really day. good point because that does make, you know, if you if they're aware of who you are and they've got that level of interest in in speaking to you on some level, when, when they see your stand or they, if they might even be actively seeking it out because of uh, the communication you've had, whereas if you don't have any of that, it is just, are you able to attract it? It's some interest in that moment. It's like any uh, marketing campaign. You wouldn't just sort of put your products out on on a social person just see what happens, would you? You'd kind of you sit down, you would figure out what your objectives are, what the touch points with your customers are is going to be, how are you going to follow up on it, and um, how are you going to monitor whether it's been successful. And I think exhibitions are no different. It's just that that window of touch point if you like is is just that day so you know almost you need more preparation for that to make sure that you you know that you're doing the right things so that kind of covers off um having a clear plan and focus as to what you're looking to achieve so moving forwards from that so say we've got an event or exhibition that we're doing in a few weeks time what do we need to be doing pre-event to be generating that interest well, for starters, letting people know that you're going to be there, you know, especially if it's quite a sort of prestigious event. Um, Ooh, people... Prestigious? What prestigious exhibitions have we been to, Jake? Oh, I knew so, you were going to ask. Selby Business Awards. <laughs> well, absolutely. Um, but uh, it's it's one of those where it's like, if it's synonymous within the industry, everyone's going to recognise that and potentially be attending as well. If you're sort of mentioning we're going to be there and then... At that point, you can put out sort of short social posts just around the build-up um, to the event and start kind of generating that interest and just maybe become part of other people's plans for when they're attending. So, all right, we want to talk to them. So at least then they're aware. Um, so I think that's one of the first things you, you need to be looking at. And I think you can use video really well in that. Like if there's um, a specific thing that you want to get across on your stand, whether it's like a giveaway or something that you that you going to be using to entice people to stand the pre-event is a good way of getting that hype and kind of build up before you get there obviously if it's a compelling enough offer but yeah little short videos to kind of letting people know that you're at the event and kind of what you're doing and what what they can expect is a good way of just getting that initial message out there before they get there so because like you say what you want is when when people do get there you want them to have heard you there and, and recognize you rather than just been just going around and, and chatting and then you doing that as well you may be sort of tempting people to attend in the first place you know some people may not be as aware of the type of companies that are going to be exhibiting but if they've interacted engaged with you before then that might be the thing that makes them think ah that's the place i need to be so you end up with more potential customers there on the day and it's trying to think, what can you do at the event? And like you, we touched on it at the start. What can you do that's a bit different that you can kind of um, offer to people once you get there? In terms of setting up meetings and stuff, what is it that you could do? Like when, when we did the Channel Live event, obviously we're a video company. Our offer was to do free videos at the event. So we could connect with people beforehand, say, look, we're doing a free video. Would you be interested? Most people say yes do the video, happy, great. That was a really good way of us interacting with other people at the event. And it's what other companies, what can they think of? What what could we offer similar to that where you kind of got a reason to speak to people beforehand as opposed to just let's connect? It's doing something different, I think. And, you know, to another way you can generate that interest is 
personalized video. So you could, you know, LinkedIn's really good for that. You can create, you know, you, you could sort of identify your target audiences, create 10, 15 personalized videos, you know, Hi, Jill. So you're going to be at the accountancy expo in a couple of weeks time. Love to show you the software we've got that we think can answer problem X, Y, and Z. Let us know if that's of interest, where it stand, whatever. Maybe don't add the stand bit because no one literally knows where any of the stands are, even though everyone tells you we're on stand 222 or whatever. But you see what I mean? It kind of yeah. gives you that, like, it's just, it's something different and it's straight in somebody's inbox and it's like, it's straight to the point as to why you can help them. Yeah, and, and I think that enables you to really get the most out of it, doesn't it? It gets people engaged beforehand rather than trying to do everything on the day. Yeah. Um, on the day, you just want to be closing, don't you? That's... Yeah, <laughs> it'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> is, have we covered everything there on generating interest or is there anything else we need to sort of cover? I think the only other thing I would add in terms of when we are building that interest is how you can kind of tag on to other people's posts about the event because obviously there'll be a hashtag or whatever for the event itself and it's can you be um commenting on other people's posts who would go in to try kind of build up a bit more um kind of reach and, and connect with people and kind of almost piggyback on other people's posts as well beforehand is probably a good way of kind of and that's one thing you can do on LinkedIn, you know, with the where you sort of ring the bell and you can kind of see every time someone posts. You might, every event that you go going to see all the speakers or even exhibit or whoever they are, if you so yeah, say speakers, you, 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 you follow all 10 of them, you ring the, the bell so you, can, you get notified every time they share a post and then bang, you're the first person there to sit, you know, to, to be adding value there. You, you, you're soon going to be synonymous with that, that upcoming event. And, and that's a good point in terms of adding value before and rather than just always being, oh, this is what we do. Do you want yeah. to, do you know what I mean? If you can add value on posts and commenting and things like that, it's just a brilliant way of building a relationship of some sort before you get there. Yeah. I think, I think as well, like if you are planning on doing anything a little bit different, a bit exciting that you're going to be having on your stand, actually using that to generate excitement. Um, you know, we probably will touch on a few things that you can do to, to actually make your stand uh, attractive. But, um, I think just getting people excited about the, the various things that you're going to have on offer on the day will, will always help as well. Yeah, definitely. And quite timely, the next point on my list is all about attracting people to your stand. So yeah, we're there, we're on the day all the preparations and all the sort of targeted conversations we've had beforehand are done. What do we need to be doing on the day to be getting as many people to your stand or attracting that audience? Obviously, in terms of the stand design itself is obviously a big key factor, but to kind of touch on video, obviously it's it's not new people having videos on the stands. It's quite commonplace, but I think one thing you can do is really look at how the video you're putting on your stand, how is that enticing people in? You've almost got to think of it as like a mini TV advert for that exhibition. So rather than just putting on all the videos you've had done about your brand and whatnot, it's it's really thinking about the purpose of that video. And essentially that video is to entice people to the stand. Um, I'm boring you, Paul. I thought, <laughs> yeah, I thought I made you on coming. I was hiding it because uh, <laughs> I just... thought the angle would be going to be on you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry yes, you were boring me. <laughs> I mentioned it. <laughs> um, I think you treat it as like your shop window, really, aren't you? And you're literally side by side with potential competitors. So it's never been more important to make yourself look attractive, essentially. Because you could probably say, it, like, five years ago, just having a video probably would have been enough to kind of stand out a little bit more. Whereas now they've all got them. Now, it's, that's not a standout thing. But there's things you can do with, like, interactive video. Um, you can have some sort of interactivity game type thing to attract people in where when they interact with the screen, it changes things. You could use VR and AR and look at, what experience you kind of want to entice people in with and VR could be a good way around that. It's And it can be on both levels. It can be if it's if it's suitable or like relevant to your particular product, then great. But even if it's not, like a lot of these events, they can be quite dry. You know, there's not, you know, that the, the, it is just a lot of people stood around talking. So what can you do differently? You know, if you've got a, a game there, we were at the, an event recently and... 
DWS at Channel Live, they had this racing car. I mean, a Formula One, and, and the, the winner won a Formula One experience of some kind. Yeah, you might not have the budget to do that. But there was two people sat in those cars, or you pretend cars, for the whole two days. And that was just getting people to their stand continuously. So what can you do that's different? It's just going to get people there even if it's not relevant to what you do, just to get people there to evoke those conversations. Yeah. I mean, those stand next to us, just an East Stewart. That's great. <laughs> and, and again, like you say, it doesn't always have to be hugely relevant um, necessarily to your target audience. And, and I suppose it depends on the type of event as well as to who you want to attract. Just as, yes, you do want it busy, but sometimes you might attract the wrong people. So it's kind of bearing that in mind as well. Sometimes as well, like you people may not sort of just look at your standing as a company they might not initially think that you're the right fit for them or that you provide the right service for them but that may become more apparent in the more conversation that you have so actually getting someone within the space and starting the conversation and you can start to sort of dig a bit deeper and, and figure out what kind of challenges they're facing it can be it can bridge that gap, I think, from just actually getting someone to come over and ask you the question, can you do this for me? You can actually start talking about it um, through the means of, like you say, a, a racing car or, or an e-scooter. So in terms of the video itself then on your stand, so say they've got a video, like what considerations should there be? Obviously, like I say obviously, but probably goes without saying there's going to be no audio on there because it'll drive people slightly crazy after two days of the yeah. same sort of backing track or audio uh, played on a loop. What things can they be doing in what video they're creating that's going to make people stop in the tracks and want to talk to them? I think it's, it's quite a unique scenario in which you'd look to create your video objectives around because a lot of the time it's an online presence or where people are kind of hanging out on social media and, and it's quite different to uh, when you're trying to attract someone who's literally walking past and potentially looking at a screen it's you've got to think about firstly how much kind of attention you're going to be able to get from these people you know what's their level of engagement going to be um it's going to be significantly probably less than if someone's actually on social media for example or on your website so you've probably got less amount of time and less sort of interest to play with in terms of attracting people over so you've really got to make sure that one the content is actually visually appealing because if it just looks drab then no one's really going to stick around and watch it and you've also got to kind of get your message and your your objective across fairly early on and, and in quite simple terms as well i think for me you're almost looking like when you look at um when you do the five second ads on youtube you've got five seconds to capture that attention and although when you're um, exhibiting an event you kind of think oh the video is going to be on all day and and whatnot but you still only have that very small window to capture it so and you need to be confident that when somebody does go past it's going to land on the right bit so if you've got a really long one with multiple messages that might not land when people go go past it's a really good point and you know we were guilty of it really recently where we looped a lot of videos together which Together, if somebody was going to watch for for that that fifteen minutes, you know, had everything included to, for our target audience. However, like you say, it's pure timing as to whether somebody's just walking past your stand at that exact moment. So, really, you're probably better going much shorter um, and and sure that you've it's real, real, you know, gold that you're showing that's going to capture that interest. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like you said, I mean, we've fallen into that mistake as well, but it, it is like you do only have such a short time window and it's, for me, it's trying to picture it like that little short five second ad on YouTube or whatever it is where you have a few seconds, what is going to entice people in to kind of do that, to get you, get you in there. Yeah, we, we've we've done that for some clients before as well. Like we, I remember doing one for one of our clients where they actually wanted to um, attract people to the stand using their videos. So they started the videos off with something really quite intriguing, like one of them was a magician, one of them was um, like a science experiment, something that's kind of not really anything to do with what they do. But you kind of looked at it and you thought, 
that's different. I, I want to see what happens. I, I mean, we that, had a Ricky Gervais um, impersonator, or David Brent impersonator, at one of the yeah. exhibitions we he, did. He was very good. <laughs> But that one you're talking about there, Jay, that was an interactive video, so then people could come up and interact with it. So if they pressed a certain thing on the screen, it would turn the lights out for the person who, the, for the magician, or it would change something. So that was a really good way of intriguing people, let them be able to interact with it, and then you've kind of got people's attention. So I think that was a really, really good example of that, um, of how you can do that. I think the other thing to bear in mind, particularly if you're, I suppose it depends on the size of the company and the stand that you're taking is for some of the bigger ones quite often you have more than one tv do you need to consider how you're going to use them because you've got that short five second ad thing to attract people but you may want to show more once people get there so it's maybe thinking about the different options and different types of videos you can show because you don't have to do one size fits all just again like we would if we were doing it online you won't suggest for people to put like six videos in one and then hope that people stick with it. You might look at the placement of your screens and what you want to show people at at what point. Yeah, so I think that's all really good stuff about how you can attract people um, to your stand. And I guess it's also about what else you can be doing at the event as well. Like, you know, it's it's really important to have that sort of regular social media presence now, particularly on the stand, talking about the product you're launching or why you're there and what other what what can people be doing from a video perspective there i think especially um it's especially relevant when you're at an event that's perhaps two or three days um you're gonna have people there and on the first day they might just be having a bit of a look around they may have kind of had a look at your stand but not really interacted but then if you're kind of posting social media content using the event hashtag you may end up in front of them again, but this time you're doing a short video explaining, you know, why you're there, what sort of things you can offer, and that may prompt people to then go back on the next day. Um, I think it's it's about kind of just maintaining that presence, not only just in the room with people walking past, but also in an evening when people might be reviewing um, the social media. When you mentioned the hashtag as well, that's really important because it's really important to keep a close eye on them as well by just clicking on them seeing what stuff people are saying you can be engaging with those posts hi we're over on stand whatever come say hello we'd love to chat about this it's just keeping up to date with what's going on at the event and why what people are talking about and and engaging with it essentially um well, I guess there's also another element about how you can sort of make... We, we touched on it briefly earlier about making the most of the people in the room when you're sort of planning there. So there might be some clients you might want to meet with. I guess bringing that back to a, a filming perspective, you know, we've worked at, at... We've been hired to work at certain exhibitions where clients have wanted to, to do that very thing and make the most of the people in the room. And the reason they do that is so that we might be able to film some little testimonials with some of their clients or there might be some other content they want us to capture and by hiring us for a day at one event where they might have five clients saves them considerably uh, saves them a considerable amount of money compared to if we were to go to five different locations and film those case studies so I guess my question is how important is it to really make the most of the people in the room and and what else can they be doing from a video perspective yeah, that, that's a really good point. Like you say, I appreciate that was a really long question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you nearly answered it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to work out what to add, but yeah, no, I think <laughs> I think you answered it then asked it. <laughs> um, but no, you're right. It's making the most of that time there. Like if if a client brings us in, yeah, are there some of your clients there that be up for doing a case study? Are there other members of the marketing team or sales team who can do some pieces to camera whilst you're there? Um, are all good ways of kind of maximizing your time and and maximizing the budget um, of the event as well yeah it's making the most of um clients availability as well you know sometimes it can be you're always asking for a favor essentially aren't you if you're going to do a testimonial or a case study um and you know if they're taking time out of the diary to come to the event you know they're there they've kind of they're not kind of stuck within the day-to-day -day tasks as such so asking them to come over to your stand for 10 minutes or just grabbing them for a quick conversation, you know, it's it's a lot less 
intrusive than if you were going to kind of say, "Come, you." Basically, say make it make it harder for them to say no. <laughs> <laughs> well, li- li- literally, <laughs> we know you're here, so you can't yeah. you can't make excuses that you're not going to be available. But uh, yeah, it's it's just kind of making it easier on your your clients, isn't it? Really, yeah. yeah. Cameras rolling. Answer these yeah. questions. Big light on you. <laughs> if you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, I guess. Well, it's a good point. It is a good point. And like I say, if they're going to be there, there are there, there are less excuses because they are there. So uh, there's also make the, the most of that. The other thing is also if there's like panel discussions and talking, speaking opportunities, if you've got somebody from your team doing that, hopefully the event company will who's putting on the event will be recording it but if not can you get somebody there to capture it just you to probably get quite a lot of content from say one speaking opportunity yeah yeah and cut it up into a lot of different sort of content and yeah it can gives it a lot more sort of longevity i guess doesn't it yeah i guess it can, it can add a, a little bit of credibility as well you know yes you're doing a client testimonial but if it's kind of within the context of a big event that everyone kind of knows and recognizes it kind of just reaffirms you within that sort of you, you're relevant within this industry so moving on i guess to our kind of final point which is more geared to we've kind of covered the planning covered the the, the pre-event what we can be doing at the event to both attract people to the stand and to also maximize your experience time and investment there I guess the natural sort of conclusion is what you should be doing post event. Now, naturally, all this will have probably come from what you've planned in the pre event stuff. I realise I'm kind of answering my own question again as I go, so I'll try and wrap it up. Do you want me to ask you one? As a question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe it's time I start answering some questions. Yeah. Uh, I've got some good answers, but no, I think, I guess my point is that from a post event comms perspective, what should we or what should people be thinking about in terms of utilizing video to nurture those prospects i think oh sorry go on <laughs> um, now i was going to say um that you know whilst you're at these um exhibitions if you're kind of planning effectively and, and doing the right things you're sort of you're getting the details of all the people that you've had conversations with that's one of the main objectives you see at all kind of exhibitions um and I think you need to be planning that nurture sequence that you have post event as a follow as a follow up to kind of build on the conversations that you've had um and video can play a big part in that in terms of kind of nurturing them through to becoming slight you know interested to to engaged um and there's lots of different types of videos that you can use to to achieve that yeah and I think um Anybody who kind of exhibits and, and does events and sells a marketing team know that everything is all in the follow-up after the event, isn't it? And you've, Paul, personally, from someone have done a lot of events, so I will put a question back to you oh, on this. On, just in terms this of... This is off the cuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be careful. Don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling yourself to be careful. Yeah. Um, but, no, like, obviously, you've done a, a lot of events and we've had some success with the follow-up some not so much like what have you seen the best results from in terms of how you've done those nurture sequences and kind of post-event follow-up i think it's it's a good question Uh, i think it's dedicating the right amount of time and doing the follow-up at the right time sometimes people can be too eager to follow up straight after the event whereas you got to think people have been away for a couple of days they've got a lot of work to catch up on take you don't just lob everything at them straight the day after the event because they're not going to be they're not the, the headspace isn't there it's make sure you've generated the interest a couple of weeks time when they've got the time then you can start to sort of nurture them properly and that's if you can arrange a call great but if you just sharing that nurture sequence it might be you know sharing a product explainer for the products that you were maybe showcasing at the event or it might well be sharing relevant case studies relevant to their sectors that may be of interest and it's just building that answering those questions that they may have had at the event um over the coming weeks so i think yeah it's not being it's not send it it's not lobbing too much information at them too quickly after an event otherwise it's going to get lost in all the noise uh, yeah i think that's a good point actually because it can be a bit too keen um, when actually they've gone through similar things that you're doing. Like, great to meet you yesterday. Here's yes. everything about us. We'll yeah. speak soon. Like, <laughs> I think it's it was 
quite important to note as well. It's a bit of a learning process as well because I remember um, sort of a while ago that you know we might have been to events exhibited and and not seen as the results that we thought we were going to. But then each year, each time we've done that after that, there's been much more of a plan in place, and we just seem to have got miles better results as because of that. And, yeah, and and when you are looking at kind of that post event follow up, is that like essentially one of the first things that you are kind of looking at when you are planning at the beginning is what is it how are we gonna yeah it has to be all built in the in the in the in the pre stage it's part of the plan it's it's the end goal really isn't it it's how you're going to engage with them after but all the planning's kind of the, the steps in the lead up to how you can generate more leads that you're going to put through that nurture sequence but yeah that nurture sequence that you're going to do after the event need to be planned before you go to the event because you need to make sure the things you're mentioning at the event are relevant to the information you're going to be sending them if anything happens at the event that changes that somewhat you can still change your nurture sequence to make it relevant to the conversation at the event so they're not mutually exclusive but uh, but yeah you kind of want to have that nailed down before the event yeah and is there certain types of video content that you've kind of experienced which is better suited kind of post event or is it very specific to the conversations you've had if you see what i mean yeah, I mean, you know, I am I am a big believer in case studies being a real, you know, if done properly, um, being a really good credibility value add to, to demonstrate what you can do. Um, but yeah, as product explainers, like I mentioned as well, if it is product based, you know, it might well be if, if, if you run a software company, it might well be a demo or a trial or something like that. So it, it can be anything, but for us personally, it's been case studies that have had the biggest impact for us. I think as well, it's it's not always like a one-size-fits-all kind of thing because I think you should use your videos that you have as like tools within your nurture sequence rather than sort of right as soon as we get back from this event everyone that we spoke to is going to get this video then this video and this video it might not kind of fit to that like, as you say like the conversations that you've had you kind of use it as a to kind of back up the things that you've been saying almost it's geared towards their problems as opposed to what it is you've got to say yeah definitely no that's all that's all good stuff and i think that's pretty much it for this week's episode so just before we sign off we just wanted to cover off those seven um key facts that we wanted you to take away and to start being able to action within your business so number one is to have a clear plan so make sure before the event you understand what you're wanting to achieve and how you're going to engage number two is to generate interest pre-event so have uh, some thought as to how you're going to build hype before the event number three is to attract people to your stand so how are you going to get the most people there to your stand and how can you leverage video to do so number four is to create regular social media content whilst you're there number five is to consider utilizing interactive elements whether that's vr ar or some form of games to drive engagement Number six is to make the most of the people in the room. Can you be capturing testimonial content or how can you maximize the people that are there? And finally, number seven is to utilize video in your post event nurture sequence comms. So thanks again, chaps, for joining me this week in the cutting room. Have yeah. we enjoyed that? Yeah, thank absolutely, you. yeah. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Cutters. Yes, so uh, I have got a new nickname. So I hope you Cutters have also enjoyed All this. seven of you. <laughs> hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, thanks. Thanks again. Thanks for joining me. It's been a good episode. We covered some good stuff there. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you again soon. If you've liked the show, don't forget to rate it. Don't forget to give us a like. Tell all your friends about it. Tell all your family tell anybody that will listen thanks again and we look forward to seeing you in the cutting room again soon